Hi guys, welcome back to Origami Twist. My name is Jen and today's video is all about organizing craft supplies in a small apartment, especially if you've got a roommate. This was a viewer request, so thank you so much for that. And if you have a viewer request, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below and uh, perhaps I can make a video about it. Please like uh, the video as well if you enjoy stuff like this. And of course, subscribe if you'd like to see future videos from me. Now I will be making a tutorial um, of Valentine's themed, I believe, on Wednesday. So um, if you're looking forward to that, that's coming. And uh, here we go. Let's go with the video. Now I've all, I have filmed this four times, and one thing that really um, that I really noticed was that I was particularly drawn to the subject of purging. Now I'm not going to put that into this video. However, if you would like to see um, a video about my philosophy on um, how much stuff to keep and how much stuff to get rid of and purging and all of that, please let me know because I would be happy to share that with you. Um, it was my um, experience with purging and with um, getting things organized and stuff has been life changing for me and I'd love to share it with you if you're interested in that. So let me know. Okay. Besides purging, how do you take care of all of your stuff in a small space? Well, first things first, you have to decide what, we well, don't have to, but ideally <laughs> you would decide how much real estate in your space, at, um, either your bedroom or your multi-purpose room, your dining room, how much space do you want to devote to your craft supplies? Now, ideally, if you've got a roommate, you would want your roommate's input on this as well because the idea is to keep the stress level down for everybody and if, every, and if you're surrounded by all of your craft supplies all the time, it can get very stressful. So having this convo with the roommate or um, partner or whomever you live with is actually a really helpful, um, helpful exercise as well. So decide where in the world are you going to store your craft stuff? Um, ideally, if it were me, I would put it in some sort of container like a, um, a wardrobe or a bookcase with opaque doors on the front or a chest of drawers, especially if it's in your bedroom. Something that has um, one streamlined face to it. And the reasoning behind that is that clutter tends to be very stressful for your brain. It's really hard to process clutter all the time. And if you're having to do that in um, a multi-purpose space like a living room or a bedroom, it just doesn't it just doesn't promote being very comfortable. So ideally something with closed doors. That way you can tuck it all away when you're done with your craft project and it's easy to get out afterwards. Now if you do have to use a bookcase, um, I would consider getting containers um, that are all streamlined, all look the same. Now you don't have to go out and buy them, you could get um, shoe boxes or even um, you know, different, different boxes and then perhaps put even white uh, printer paper over the top of, of the front of them so that all of the boxes are white on your shelves. Something like that. Ideally neutral colors, a way to get it to blend into the background. Again, especially if it is a, um, a space that's shared with someone else, like a living room. Okay, so you've got your furniture, you've got your real estate um, decided. Uh, now you would decide where you're going to be working on your projects. So are you using the dining room table, are you using the coffee table, uh, a lap table, which I've used before for, you know, a lap desk to use for making cards and stuff. They work great. And... If you can, try to locate your storage close to that location. Now, if you can't, that's okay. Um, you can always bring the boxes with you to the table and then pop your stuff back in after and put it back on the shelf. That's okay, too. It's totally up to, you know, what you have available to you. Now, you've got your location of where you're crafting. You've got your storage. Now, we need to fill the storage, right? Now, ideally... The first thing that I would do if I were, you know, resetting up my storage space is I would immediately get all of the basics that I use every single time I craft. So for example, um, paper crafter, I would use scissors and ruler and pens and pencils and a paper trimmer and that sort of adhesive, that sort of thing. Uh, black ink for stamping. 
and I put all of that into one box that still has a little bit of room on top for growth. And that way, every single time you craft, you just grab the basics box, then you grab all of the extra stuff like your paper and your stamp pads and whatever you're going to be using, grab that stuff, and then bring it to the table, do your project. It's really easy to clean up after because you just pop the lid back on the, on the basics box, put it back on the shelf, discard anything that you are, um, you know, throwing away, and then put everything else back in its, its particular box. So you've got, a, so, so basics box is my number one priority when creating a craft space or a basics area. I actually have a drawer in my craft room for all the basics for the same reason. Now, here comes the hard part, and this is where I got off on the purging tangent, <laughs> and I've got a whole other video for it. Um, not everybody has lots and lots of craft supplies, so this may not apply to you, but essentially, for the rest of the space that's in your storage area, or your storage furniture, now's where you kind of, now is where you kind of have to think about um, what your priorities are. What's your most important, what's, what is the most important craft to you? Is it cross stitching? Is it paper crafting? You know, and, and create a space in your furniture or in your storage space that is primarily for each of those priorities. So you come up with categories of the different kinds of crafts that you do. And so for example, if you're a knitter or crocheter, you would need a container for yarn. And you need to decide how important is yarn to me and how much of my, of my storage space do I want to devote to yarn. Now that answer is going to be completely different depending on who you are. And ideally, what you would do is get your collection to the size of whatever that decision is. So if you've decided an entire shelf of your bookcase is going to be all about the yarn, that, but you've got five shelves worth of yarn and you're only putting it on one shelf, then you would need to decide what are your most important pieces of yarn or important uh, skeins of yarn and get it down to one and then let the rest of it go. And again, I'll talk more about that in the purging video. If you're interested, let me know if you want to hear about it. And you do that for each type of um, craft that you do. So paper, if you're a paper crafter, stamp pads, Got markers, you know, whatever it is that you've got craft supply wise, you break them down into containers, um, you know, and storage, whatever you are using for your storage. And I, you know what, when I'm doing this, I actually draw it on a piece of paper and put in little boxes for what storage container goes where and label them. And then that way I can sort of do the planning ahead of time and I don't have to keep refilling the storage thing while I'm deciding. It's up to you. P different people do storage in different ways or do planning like this in different ways. So once you have decided where, what's going where and how much of, of your storage space is going to be devoted to each type of um, craft supply, you then either obtain uh, containers or put things in containers that you've already got, pop all of that stuff in there, leave a little bit of room because Again, the growth factor, at some stage, you're probably going to be buying more materials. So leave room for growth and put that onto the shelves. Now, one last tip um, while you're planning out where your supplies go, if at all possible, get a couple of empty boxes. Um, I've got some here. I call these my sanity boxes because if I'm in the middle of a project, and sometimes projects take a couple of days, don't they? If I'm in the middle of a project, I pop the project into this box, and different size boxes would work for different types of crafts, but for paper crafting this usually works pretty well. I pop all the supplies into here, except for the basics, because they belong in the basics box. Then I pop the lid on, and in dry erase marker, I write on the side of the box the name of the project, put the lid on, and then I've got a space for that in my craft room, that or my craft space, that allows me to uh, put that and then it, it's got its own storage space. Your projects have a storage space too. This keeps them from ending up in bags all along the side of the wall, which is the way I used to do it. <laughs> you have four or five projects all lined up and again, that clutter is so stressful. It really is. Even if you're not thinking about it being stressful, it becomes 
it can become very, very overwhelming to have stuff all over the place. So I hope that helps. Um, grab some furniture, find out where you're going to be doing your crafting. Of course, um, make a basics box and then containerize and prioritize where everything's going to go. Have a couple of empty project boxes if you have space, uh, have enough space for that. Pop everything in it and then you're ready to craft. Now it sounds simple, it is a lot of work, I fully understand that. Um, but, it's, but it is totally worth the process, absolutely worth the process. And your crafting and your creativity will skyrocket um, once you do once you do it. It's really, really, really worth it. All right, I'd love to see your after photos if you've made um, some changes to your craft room over either over on the Facebook page or if you've got a blog, please link to your blog below. I'd love to see that. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you on Wednesday with the new Valentine tutorial. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.